Hey there, it's Mr. Thompson here with another video math lesson. Today we'll be talking about finding the midpoint and the length of line segments. Okay, uh, so first let's figure out what exactly a line segment is. Um, here's a nice line segment. Okay, and obviously a line segment is a part of a line. Lines go on forever in either direction, but a line segment is the part of the line um, between two endpoints, such as these little dots here. It's the part of the line including those two endpoints and all the points in between. Now we're going to talk about finding the length of the line segment, which is nice and easy. It's just how long it is. And the midpoint of the line segment, which is also pretty easy. It's the um, center, it's that point in the middle of the line. Uh, and it's specifically the point in the middle of the line that divides the line into two uh, exactly equal line segments. Okay, so that's the midpoint. Um, now we're going to use our um, coordinate plane and we'll have an example of a line segment on here. And um, when you're asked to find the midpoint and length of line segments, you'll be given the coordinates of the endpoints. Okay, so for this example, we have endpoints here and here. The coordinates are negative 1, 1 and 5, 5. Negative 1, 1 down here, and 5, 5 over there. Okay? What we're going to do is um, we're going to find the horizontal distance that that segment travels, and we're also going to find that vertical distance as well. Uh, a little bit like when we were calculating the gradient, we're going to find those same um, distances there. And in order to find the midpoint, what we have to do is we're going to find the middle of that horizontal section and connect that up to our um, line and we'll find the middle of the vertical section and connect that over to our line and the point where those two lines where those two um, midpoints meet up is the middle of our actual line segment okay so we'll go through how to do that here in just a second to find the length um, which we'll do after that um, we're, we um, find the length of these horizontal and vertical sections and you can see I've labeled them A and B. And then we will call this one C, and we can do use our good old friend Pythagoras theorem, seeing as how we've created a right triangle here. Okay? So it's nice and easy. Let's go through how to do this. Okay? And we're using the same example. Um, so let's start with the midpoint. Um, we want to find the distance. No, not the distance. We want to find the, the middle, this uh, the midpoint of this actual uh, horizontal segment right here. Um, so in order to do that, <clears throat> uh, and then we'll also want to find the middle of this vertical one, in order to do that all we have to do is take the coordinates that give us those lengths, so for the horizontal one we're going to use the x coordinates, and for the vertical one we'll use the y coordinates, all we have to do is take those coordinates and find the average, uh, and that gives us the very center of those uh, of those horizontal and vertical parts. So, um, got some instructions here. To find the midpoint, find the average, or the mean, of the x-coordinates, and then of the y-coordinates. Okay, So, we have x1 and x2, those are our x-coordinates. Negative 1 and 5. Right? So, we're going to find the average of them, and that will give us the direct uh, middle of those two, the direct center of those two um, coordinates, uh, and give us that point we want right there. So we'll do x1 to average them, we add them together and divide by how many they are. there are. Of course in this case there's only two. So x1 plus x1, uh, x1 plus x2 divided by 2. So negative 1 right, uh, plus 5 over 2. Negative 1 plus 5 is 4, so 4 over 2 and 4 divided by 2 is 2. Okay, now that is the um, <clears throat> X coordinate of our midpoint because this these this point here the middle of that horizontal section has the same x coordinate as the that point directly above it, All right? So that's the x coordinate of our midpoint. So I've called it x uh, m and m of course stands for midpoint. Now we're going to do the same thing for the y coordinates. So we're calling them y one and y two. So we add them together and divide by two. This time it's just 1 plus 5 divided by 2, which is, of course, 6, divided by 2 is 3. OK? 
Okay, and that is the y coordinate of our midpoint because if you can see here the uh, the middle this point here the center of that vertical um, section has the same y coordinate as our midpoint there so that's our uh, y coordinate for the midpoint so we could say our midpoint we can call it m equals x sub m uh, y sub m where uh, x sub m is equal to this little formula here and y sub m is equal to this formula here right um, so you could plug those formulas in here as well if you wanted. In our case, we'll just take those numbers and plug them in, right? Two and three, and that's our midpoint. Okay, let's move on and talk about finding the distance. We've ticked off the midpoint. Let's find the length, all right? So, uh, um, in other, and it's, that's the same as finding the distance between these two um, coordinates, all right? As I said, we're going to find the distance of this uh, horizontal section and the distance of this vertical section. And then we're going to use Pythagoras' theorem to find that um, length of the segment. So, um, in order to find the distance from one coordinate to another, again, we have our x coordinates, x1 and x2. That will give us the horizontal distance. Okay, And to find the distance between them, uh, those two coordinates, we simply subtract them. So we do uh, 5 minus negative 1. And five, uh, subtracting a negative is the same as adding a positive. So it's just 5 plus 1, which of course is 6. And we do the same thing for our vertical. Um, to find the vertical distance, All right, we will um, subtract the y coordinates, y1 and y2. So that's just 5 minus 1, which is 4. Okay, now uh, we have our um, uh, two lengths, the vertical, the horizontal length and the vertical length. So the horizontal length is 6, so I've said A equals 6 and B equals 4. Okay, and we're going to put that into Pythagoras' theorem. Pythagoras' theorem, of course, looks like this. C squared equals A squared plus B squared, or A squared plus, uh, plus B squared equals C squared, whatever way you want to do it. And we're just going to plug in our values. So in for, for A we're going to put in the 6 and for B we'll put in the 4. Okay, We square those, so 6 squared is 36, 4 squared is 16, and we add them together to get 52. Now, um, that's not the answer, right? 52 is equal to C squared. Okay, So I'll rewrite that over here. C squared equals 52. And in order to uh, find what C is equal to, we have to get rid of that square, so we take the square root of both sides. So uh, we get c equals the square root of 52. Now, when you're doing these problems, um, some problems will tell you to round to the nearest tenth. So when your job is to round to the nearest tenth, you just get out the old calculator and plug in square root of 52, and in this case, we will get approximately 7.2. Okay, so the nearest tenth, that's the answer. Um, some problems might ask you to leave it in an exact form. So if you have um, learned how to reduce or simplify, rather simplify radicals, then um, you will know how to do that. And the answer is 2 times the square root of 13. If you haven't learned that, then you can either leave it in square root of 52, which is an exact answer, even though it's not simplified, not, um, or you can round as the problem asks you to. Um, such as to the nearest tenth, and so on. That's all there is to it. I'll see you next time.